not very. But you will see, if this works correctly, the infinity effect. Dun dun dun! That is a crappy infinity effect. Okay, welcome to the stream. Uh, this is clearly not a great infinity effect here. Of oh, course, cool, there's like a four second delay. Uh, so you will, we're going to get the infinity effect in slow motion. Uh, so as you can see today, I'm going to be twitching from uh, the same VM that I do everything on. I, I'm pretty sure that's a bad idea. I'm like 99% sure this is going to figuratively blow up in my face, uh, not literally. Although, well, literally would be a little bit more difficult. Okay, and I do see, um, mommy. Okay, and unfortunately, I do have my chat up here. I just don't know if I'm going to notice it if someone sends something. I hope I will, but uh, it might have actually been more noticeable uh, when I had a uh, when I had it separately. But let's go ahead and shrink it down a little bit. And I should have thought of this earlier, but I could probably make the actual uh, window the VM is in bigger. Uh, ooh, that is some wacky looking stuff there. Um, let's go ahead and get off this page because I'm confusing myself. Um, Okay, I wonder if I can change the size of this window while streaming, and... Oh yeah, here we go. Well, you know, if we're going to do it from this machine, we might as well fuck with ourselves as much as possible. Let's go ahead and make this window a little bit wider. Okay, that worked. That was good. So, I haven't really lost any space there. Now, let me see if, um... You know, I think... I think... Well, I OSM took it. Let's see if, uh, OS... But only on OSB, not OSM. Uh, let's just see how it looks on the four second delay calendar. Okay. Looking good, looking good. Looking good. Come on, infinity effect. I am so lame. I get into this crap. Okay. I don't know what causes the delay, by the way. Um, um, interestingly, it says zero, zero, zero on the session. Uh, excellent bitrate, I guess. No recommended changes. Um, and I don't really understand this uh, delay. I don't. I think it's intentional. Uh, if I turn on the sound here, nothing should work because uh, the sound on this VM doesn't work. So I don't hear myself echoing, but I will go ahead and turn it off anyway. Okay, so what are we doing on the stream other than me just wanking around a little bit? Um, yeah. Okay, let's take a look at our readme.stream, because I, I don't actually know, I forgot. I wrote it five minutes ago, but I already forgot. Okay, so I've mentioned that. All right, I've talked about Math.js before. I really liked it as a library. I think it's done a lot of stuff um, for us. And um, if we didn't, I, I'm wondering, can I contribute to it? Now, you're probably saying, didn't yet, weren't we in the middle of a project earlier, uh, and won't this interrupt that project? And the answer is yes. Yes, it will. That's exactly why we're doing it as part of our policy to never actually finish a project, except for that one we finished accidentally about uh, centers of population. So now let's go and see if I, I don't, I have never even looked into this, but um, I think we're just going to get rid of this. This is kind of annoying. Excuse me. Oh, math.js.org. So there is a nice little, uh, nice little table, nice little page for it. Um, okay. Okay. Um, that's, I think we are at the home page. Well, index.html, but it's still the home page. Download. Um, oh, do they not have a... Uh, uh, okay, so math, other math libraries. Uh, history. Source code. Aha, here we go. We've found the git. Um, let's see how long ago he's done anything to it. Oh, 22 hours. So I think we're going to be okay there. Um, let's see. Um, so the step here would be to pull this, uh, make a change, and then submit that change. Um, here we go. Um, okay. Okay. I'm trying to see if there's an easier way to contact him um, or how he feels about contributions. Um, 
Wow, okay. So he is this guy. Um, well, no, he's not this guy. He is... Uh, alrighty. Do I want to do this? Uh, let's go ahead and do it. So we're going to go over here and get into a... Yeah, I really, really probably need to stop. Uh, well, let's just figure this out. Okay, uh, let, we're going to pull it. Let's, um, I don't have a great place to pull it, so let's just create a directory for it that has a stupid name. So git clone. I think you could also have done a goo. Yo mama. Okay, and the problem there was again because I turn off and on secure shell. Okay. And this will take a few seconds, as you can see. I'm wondering if chat will pop up when someone says something. When there is someone in chat, let me know, and we can do a little test to see if this will pop up uh, when uh, when someone says something, which would be really, really useful. Um, because right now I'm kind of trying to look at it in other screens at the same time, and it, the audio is turned off. I mean, the audio on the VM is turned off, so that doesn't help either. Although it didn't work in the other... Um, I wonder if I can turn audio on. Um, oh, wow. Uh, not, none of this is what I want, like, which is, can you do pop-ups or something when I get a chat message? Here's what non-modes can, yeah, well, my preferences. Filters, show timestamp, readable colors, hide chat, pop, oh, it's already popped out. Okay, so that's not really helpful. Maybe I can do something, I probably can't do anything from here either. That just tells me who's in chat. Okay, uh, so we've cloned it now, and let's take a quick look at it here. And it does clone into its own directory, which is very nice, but that's true of all GitHub projects. So the question now here is, where is he putting his uh, most of his functions, is, is, the, uh, is the question. Um, that's really interesting that he's using the REPL, but that might just be a, uh, that's a general run, evaluate, do some other shit, do some other shit. Okay. So this is... Um, this is a, actually a short file that I think calls everything else that it needs to. So, oh, this is, a, I keep forgetting, this is actually a node, uh, a node uh, JS type program that just happens to work in, in the browser. But let's see where he has, okay, well, source might be where it is, because that seems like a good place to put stuff. Um, and function might be a good place to put some functions. Wow, he is, he's up there. Algebra. Uh, decomposition. Um, let's see what this does. Okay, so let's go ahead and get into function and see what he's doing there. Okay, do we do we have someone on the chat? <gasps> Hello, fierce crocodile. <laughs> Who his himself describing himself as a fanboy. Um, send you an invite on Google Hangout. Oh, cool. Um. Do you want to join the stream? And also, I'm gonna I'm gonna minimize you and uh, see if you pop up automatically. Not you personally, but the chat, uh, and see if you pop up automatically. Uh, if you do pop up automatically, uh, great. If you don't, I'm gonna check it again in a few seconds to you know to make sure that you didn't pop up automatically. So go ahead and do something. Uh, so I've got that. Uh, I'll just wait a few seconds because I don't know when you're going to pop up. All right. Let's see if that worked. No, nah, thanks. I'm fine. Only slept for three hours. Half look in the coordinate system is fierce. Okay, so apparently it doesn't pop up automatically when uh, there's there's new information on it. Um, yeah, there's a billion things Firefox can do, but not the one I want. Um, all right. Well, I mean, I haven't really lost any space here because I'm going to do this because now I'm using a, a, a fuller screen. But oh man, I could put this on the other end though. Let's see if what I can do if I can put this over. Ah, your mama. Have my 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 auto raise is a little bit too fast. Oh, you watched my stream yesterday. Okay, see so now, I gotta put this back in here. So the weird thing is you can actually see the chat on the on the uh, video. Um, differential geometry, the one yes yes the one we did literally did yesterday. Um, the fact that you can see this, the chat on the screen because I'm actually looking at it on the screen is a very strange way of doing things. Usually people do an overlay for this. 
but uh, I guess chat's not private. If someone whispers to me, I'll probably have to be careful not to running running Twitch on the VM that I'm twitching that I'm broadcasting from is is weird. Okay, so now tell me if you're a crocodile and be honest because I my streams are really boring and have very little real content. Right? Please confirm that for the people at home or wherever you're watching the stream. As we await Fierce Crocodile's response, we will have this narrator guy say something. You are right, thank you. I, but I like it. And, and really, uh, what I need to do with these streams, uh, I think they're more fun if you're watching them live, although I'm still not saying they're fun, but you know, when you're helping out and stuff. I, I think, you know, um, better than watching guys playing PC games. Woohoo! So, I suck less than people who suck. That, that's that's always that's always nice, um, and honestly, I think the uh, the the better thing to do with these streams um, would be the answers that they give out are pretty good, or you know they're they're okay. People like them on Stack Exchange, um, or writing code that actually runs and give that out. Uh, I don't think the process of getting there is wanted to look into Big Circle, but it's like a rabbit hole. So much stuff I have to learn first, but I try. Um, Big circle. Oh, oh, great circle. Yes, okay. Uh, great circle is like a term of art, so you can't just replace the word great with something else. And a big old circle, though. Uh, but yes, and we, we, we kind of solved part of that problem. And oh, and I'm going to put this on my list. I forgot almost. Um, um, and so I've got this already BC get things. So, so, and post to stack. Big circle question. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to post to Stack Exchange why this is so ugly, and um, you know, th let's see, let them solve it. It's, it's always let better to let other people solve your problems. Today I was in the office, like, oh, what do I, what do I do? I do I have nothing to do. Yes, Great Circle had some beer, and I'm quite tired now. Um, just because it, it seems a little bit suspicious, um, in Germany you're allowed to drink beer on the job. Is this correct? Because if it is, people are going to be like flocking over there. No, okay, so sadly you cannot drink beer at the office in Germany. Um, so so that, that is kind of sad. Oh, you meant you had some beer just now, and it is for 6.28 p.m. I don't know why I'm repeating what you're saying, because at this point people can actually see it. Um, I guess it's just force of habit. Uh, so, oh, so your office would be a student office, uh, not, not a, uh, not a working office, not a, like, uh, uh, yeah, okay, but, but that's cool. I think in Germany, um, they, they pay for your education because it's Europe and, um, all of Europe is the same. Um, uh, and you can drink in the student office. Oh, <coughs> I'm still repeating what you're saying. Um. You know, I mean, I just, I just don't know. I personally am very sensitive to alcohol, so I don't drink it. Plus, I'm diabetic, so I can't drink it without my blood sugar getting dangerously low. Um, but I guess it's nice. I mean, I don't know. Like the, the, this, this, this thread has kind of filtered itself out. Okay, so contributing to math, uh, JS. Um, so it looks like maybe I don't want to kite go barging into this, uh, and it looks like he's done quite a bit of interesting stuff here. Um, okay, now why is he written cosine in JavaScript? Uh, okay. Oh, okay. I guess he's wrapping all the, uh, the capital math functions um, in case he wants to improve them or in case, uh, you know, you're just using this library and, you know, you just want to use math dot lowercase all the time. So that could be it. Um, I'm going to try to put this, this is going to be a failure. I'm going to try to put this chat thing at the very right and, and not cover it up, which is going to be the hard part because uh, I do that a lot and then move some of this crap to the left. Okay, cool. And then I'm going to put a, uh, I'm going to put a message here just so I, I know that this is my message. Um, okay, so now if I see purple under there, oh, here we are. Um, wow. 
Wow, wow, wow. Well, you know, maybe drinking will help you understand math better. You can make that argument. Um, okay. All right, so I think in MathJS we kind of want to uh, maybe... I'm just kind of curious where he defines the, do uh, the cross product. So let's do this. And unfortunately, they're probably... M oh, wow. That's matrix cross JS. By the way, it, the left part of the screen is off the screen. So it's you're not seeing a mistake. Oh, and he actually just does it as a... He, he understands that it's like a mathics thing. I'm going to have to move this a little bit over this way. Um, oh, wow. I'm going to have to move a lot over this way. Okay. Um... um Wow, you told your... Okay, and I, I realize I don't have to read the chat anymore. Fellow students excited about circle coordinates. Now, I mean, I am because I'm, I'm a lifelong freaking geek mathematician. Uh, today what we're doing, the first thing we're doing is I, I've been using this wonderful mathics library before. And, um, and I'm wondering if I can contribute to it. Now, I'm not saying I will contribute to it, but... Um, but the question is, can I, um, you know, if I wanted to, could I contribute to it? Because I want to write in things like spherical to XYZ, XYZ to spherical, but we'll need a different form for this guy's library because he does things differently. Um, maybe the Gudermannian function, stick that in there somehow. I wonder if he has that. I don't think he does. I'm almost sure he doesn't. But, you know, let's find out. No, he doesn't. Um, but I, I don't want to mess with his structure. This is GitHub. I can push something. I can make a request to him. Um... Your friend who is doing network analysis is interested in circle coordinates. Uh, that doesn't really ring... T okay, that's two different fields of math, but that's fine. I mean, great. It's great that you like circle coordinates. Really, anything that keeps you guys out of Poland is a good thing. So circle coordinates, sure. Network analysis, do what you want. And by the way, if I've offended any Germans in the audience... Uh, well, there is one German, obviously, in the audience, but if I've offended anyone, uh, you are now offended. Please don't start World War III over it. Okay. Took you some time to understand. Oh, my joke or uh, about Poland or I don't I don't know. Or you mean network analysis? No, I think you mean my joke. Yes, it's it's the standard make fun of German people for the last war, so they'll get angrier and angrier until they do another war. Then we'll just have to be angry about them for that war. It's a running cycle, you know, and, I, and, and it's been too long, really. I mean, the last one was 1945, guys, you know, come on, almost a century now. I, I expect you to do something in the 2020s, in this decade, because, you know. Um, yeah, I, I don't know how much uh, history German students learn. Um, Poland, of course, was just the first country that sort of went. Uh, lots of others went later, but Poland is sort of the, the, uh, the joke there. France also, I think, surrendered pretty quickly. Uh, but I think uh, the invasion of Poland was sort of the first, the real sort of alert that uh, something was happening in, in, in Europe. Um, actually, I don't know. Um, kind of interested in military things, so this is not at all dangerous. We have a German guy, Blitzkrieg, yes, the, uh, the um, bombing to death of, was it in September? Uh, I... I don't remember. There was a whole, there's a whole history to World War II, oddly enough, because it's a historical thing. Um, I mean, they had treaties with the United States, and Neville Chamberlain, I think, uh, famously had the... Um, okay. As m okay. No, no, no. no uh, sorry. As much as I love math, and if you distracted me with something mathematical, we would have probably gone down this road. But I think I am not interested enough in World War II to find out like what happened. I, I know that there was a, con uh, a conciliatory speech by Neville Chamberlain saying we will accept um, we will accept Germany going into Poland. Um, so I think they did that. And I think we had they had treaties with the United States and stuff. So uh, when they invaded Poland, there was sort of a, um, well, guess, there's a lot of stuff taught in school. Oh, I mean, you guys, you guys are taught in school, but are, are you taught like you were the good guys or are you taught that... Uh, you know, Poland kind of deserved it, or Poland had been kind of like 
you know, bullying you or something. I don't, I don't know what the, what the exact situation is, how they describe it in Germany. <laughs> I mean, the French deserved it, but I mean, oh, wow, so they do tell you that you were the, the bad guys. Okay. And I mean, you know, you don't have to believe that. That is just an opinion. Uh, maybe, maybe Poland did deserve it. You never know. Um, Austria probably, Austria, yeah, I mean, Austria, I think that was Hitler's home country, so I don't know if that counts or something. Uh, Austria, I'm pretty sure, is, should be a part of Germany. They speak the same, same language, I think. Anyway, you are not dragging me into a conversation about language. You could drag me into a conversation about math. Um, so what I'm going to do here is, um, yeah, let's, let's see if we can contact, I'm going to make a very brief effort to contact this guy and say, I want to add things like uh, Gudermannian, and let's just make a little note here, Gudermannian and um, spherical XYZ and, and vice versa. And, ooh, so here's where I get to be a pain in the freaking ass. I can mention my own stream and, and my own GitHub and say, you know, ha ha, look at this, I'm impressive. I'm not impressive, by the way, just I could say that to him. And I could say, look at BC Lib staging and BC Lib. Um, by the way, BC apps is Brian Caps. I don't know who he is, but I, I think he needs to die. No, I'm just kidding, Brian. I don't know who you are. Um, so let me see if I can find where the, um, yep, that never seems to work for some reason. Okay. So let me see if I can actually find the uh, BC Lib. Oh, they're going to be right at the top level too. So BC Lib and BC Lib staging, which we finally got all um, collected together yesterday, and and also which appears at the very end of this alphabetical list. Holy crap! Um, wow. This is freaking ugly. I'm going to go back to chat now and see if we're still talking about... Uh, it's a very controversial... Okay. So in Germany, World War II, controversial topic. Just... Okay. Um, can you use differential... And, and I know I don't have to read it out loud. Well, we looked at differential geometry yesterday. I think... I don't know if you were there. Uh, I got confused by it, to be honest. Um, you basically redefine a metric, which, which is fine. But the question is, how does that metric uh, help you find the shortest solution, the shortest route? I mean, I think that's called calculus of, uh, oh yeah, you did watch it, sorry. I think that's called calculus of variations. Um, your math is way beyond, <laughs> man, maybe. Uh, calculus of variations, which means you try to find a function that has a certain property. And that we might actually go ahead and uh, Google. Uh, because this is not the same thing as regular everyday calculations. Calculus. Um, calculus of variations. Uh, okay, they don't have a nice picture here. Let me see if I can find the word shortest route. Pro oh, there, yeah. So a simple example of a, of a uh, calculus of variations problem is to find the curve of the shortest length that connects two points. Obviously, it's a straight line if it's otherwise okay. If it's contained to a surface, the solution is less is uh, less obvious, and maybe many solutions exist. Ge geodesics is what we're doing. Whoa, I didn't mean to click on it though. Um, uh, light follows the path of shortest optical length connecting two points, where the optical length depends on the material and the medium. Uh, corresponding concept on mechanics is the principle of least stationary action. So what they're basically saying, uh, what the general concept here is, um, you can use it with routes, you can use it with other things. But basically, if you're trying to get from point A to point B, uh, if, you know, if every step counts the same, straight line, no problem. Um, if there are some steps that are prohibited, then, you know, if there's blockades in your way, then you have the very simple, uh, let's see. Oh, very interesting. Maybe you can enroll in math and so well, you, know, you, you can, but I mean, this is actually the concept behind calculation, uh, calculus of variations is very simple. It's not an easy subject, but it, the, the you know, they're trying to get from point A to point B, straight line in most situations. But let's say there's obstacles in the way, then the straight line solution might not be the best. 
Now, the other p possible problem is, um, you know, like, like on the Earth, you can't go through the center of the Earth, which would be shorter. So you're constrained to a surface. Um, so that's part of it is, you know, obstacles. But then you could also have the situation where uh, you can move faster on, let's say, prairie land, grassland, than you can in the forests. So if there's a forest between you and your destination, um, it might actually make, you know, you probably want to spend the least amount of time in the forest, or you want to balance it so the amount of time you spend in the forest um, doesn't slow you down too much, even if it's a straight line. And that's the sort of problem with light and refraction, um, is that light will follow the shortest path, and that is, it turns out refraction is what does that. Uh, but, you know, and th there's a standard problem of if you're on the beach and you're trying to get to, the, to somebody, um, the straight line might be, you know, the shortest route, but once you get into the water, you're going to move much slower, so you probably want to get right up to the edge. You, know, you want to get to right on the beach where the water is the shortest distance away. But if it's a combination of speeds, like highways and stuff, you know, um, Oh, you were good. You were looking at, at the great circle. Uh, you can go at the big circle if you want to, but just just realize water has density one. That is that is factually true, but that is because we've kind of defined it to be that way. Um, the density of water at four degrees Celsius is defined to, to be you know um, I think that's how the gram is defined or was at one point. Still might be. Uh, and in fact, I think it is. The gram is defined as the uh, um, the mass of one cubic centimeter of water at four degrees centigrade, or Celsius. Um, so that is, that's more of a definition thing. Um, well, now you're gonna make me Google this. Good, by the way, if you're thinking, you know, if you're watching the stream for some other reason than to get completely lost, I'm sorry, but that's what we're doing. So let's take a look at how the gram is defined. Um, originally defined as, so let's go ahead and go to Wikipedia, but it looks like they've changed the definition. Originally defined as the absolute weight of a volume of pure water equal to the cube 100 <laughs> meter centimeter uh, at the melting of temperature melting ice later at 4 degrees Celsius, where the it's the maximum density. Um, um, oh, yeah. Okay. Okay. I think I remember reading about this. Um, they changed the definition. Uh, so it could be easy, more easily uh, created in a laboratory. But yes, at one point, it was based on the, wa you know, the, uh, the weight of water. Um, now, a one liter is a 10 centimeter cube, 10 times 10 times 10, because volumes change as the cube of the side, not with the side. So um, it would be a decimeter cubed uh, would have been a cubic liter, uh, would have been a liter, sorry, or originally but they've changed it. Uh, by the way, be careful, um, it's decimeter is, uh, I'll actually type it in in the chat now so people can even see it. It's going to be, and you have to be careful with parentheses here, it's going to be this. Not, it's not gonna be 10 decimeters with the, the you know, it's going to be 10 decimeters time, I'm sorry, I screwed that up. I screwed that up, sorry. Ignore, ignore. I wonder if I can break my, I wonder if I can block my own messages. Uh, let's see, let me see if I can delete my own message here. Uh, okay, I, I may be able to do that, and I, I don't know how. But sorry, that's wrong. So if you're listening, god damn it. Now I brought up a mode I don't want to be in. No, fuck! Hang on. I've really effed this up now. Woohoo! How do I get rid of this fucking... No, I don't want to see who I am. I'm very much opposed to that. Is there like something at the right hand side of this that I can't see now? Be gone from this place. Well, oh, fuck, hang on. I think I might have to make chat wider just to see what the hell's going on here. There we go. Okay, stand by, stand by. 10 centimeters. Ooh, shiny. Um, too, too skinny. Uh, it's still too skinny. I'm, not, I'm never going to figure this out. I'm going to spend all this time just basically trying to figure out what the correct. There we go. Okay. So yes, um, hum humans are erroneous, or humans, uh, whatever. So anyway, that's 10 centimeters cubed, or what I was trying to say is it's one decimeter cubed. A decimeter is 10, oh, frick! I cannot type today. Cubed, not squared. One decimeter s cubed. Um, and an air is one meter squared, I think, like in hectare. 
uh, hecht is 100 meters squared. So yes, the, um, the, the, the units have different uh, definitions. Uh, maybe we should do coordinates. Okay, give me more on that. Uh, you said IO, but I don't know if IO is means I don't know, or you're referring to the moon of Jupiter, or one zero, or it's just a little guy raising his hand. Uh, so I don't I don't know what that means. Uh, but go ahead, tell me. But so I was wrong about the gram, but I I did remember the general idea. Also, the meter was originally going to be defined as one forty millionth of the way around the world, or one ten millionth of the way from the equator to the North Pole. Um, which again is no longer how it's defined. It's now defined as the distance light at in a vacuum travels in a certain amount of time. Um, supposed to eman. Oh, that's a little. That's a little. Uh, that's a little eman. Okay, I I get it. I guess I, you know, I, I yeah. Okay, whatever. Um, so. Okay, we're now deeply into this mess. Um, so we're gonna unroll out of the gram. Uh, calculus of variations is interesting, and we might look at it at some point. Um, it's 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 pretty interesting because there's an infinite number of paths usually between two points. Uh, even if you're limited to the surface of the sphere, there's plenty of ways to do it. There's plenty of ways to get between two points. Um, finding the shortest one is what calculus of variations is all about. Um, but but it's not easy. I don't think. I mean. This is the Euler-Lagrange, uh, you know, you basically have to integrate something and then basically um, try to find its, m you know, the derivative minimum, but it does, you know, as, as we do with every derivative, we try to find where it's zero, so that's where the, uh, we know that the, uh, the curve is minimal, or at least has a local minima. But, but this is not, this is non-trivial stuff here. Um, oh, to err is human, errera humana estum. To err is human, to forgive divine. Um, okay. Good deal. Okay. Right. So we're going to try to briefly contact this guy and see if he's looking for more, uh, crap. Uh, Jose De Jong. Oh, wow. He's not bad looking. I don't know why I said that, but he's not. Um, oh, he's got his own freaking website. Um, oh. So he's really into this math JS. Um, so he he's whining about it. Um, and you're thinking, shouldn't you be writing this email on your own time? This is my own time. Although I might actually still defer this a little bit. Contact. Oh, here it is. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to add him um, to Google Hangouts, which I don't have here. But uh, uh, let me um, let me see if I can add him. Um, I'm going to add him. You I know you can't see what I'm doing. I'm going to add him. Um, say I can add him. I probably no, can't do that. But it's sort of hard named. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and add him. W. Joss De Jong. So I'm adding him um, on my on my um, chat. I'm adding him to Google Hangouts, but I'm doing it on a different machine. And then add buddy to group. No, he, uh, he can be in the group. He can be in this special group here. Okay. I doubt he's going to get back to me during the stream. And if he does, you won't be able to see it. So let's briefly, uh, you know, uh, let's briefly. Let's see. Uh, okay, now let's go back to ch chat here, which something has happened. Whoa! Dude. Hang on. One sec here. You do not show up as a um, pending contact. I usually get a pop-up saying that uh, someone's trying to, trying to join me. Uh, if you want to give me your um, g email, uh, which would be very stupid to do in chat unless you you're very very lonely. Um, send me your email to my you know, to the same address that you would have Google Hangouted me at. Uh, send that there and I'll add you uh, from the other machine so people will not see who you are. Or if you want, post it here, and because no one ever watches these streams anyway. But 
Up to you. Okay, so we're not going to go ahead and draft a message to him. I will make a note to do that on my other machine. Ping Joss, MathJS. That's on my other machine. Okay, so we will go ahead and go to the. Um, we will go go to this point. Um, the email stated on the stream is probably not the correct email. Let me go ahead because that is a. Th was that the Barry Carter dot info email? So I'm very lonely. If anyone wants to add me on Google Mail, this is the address. Oh yeah, that is the correct address. Okay, yeah, no. This is the address you have to add me on. This is the um, this is the Gmail address that I um, that I have Google Hangouts on. Um, I don't think Barry Carter info. It, it probably is a Google domain. I don't really know if it is actually. I haven't thought about that. Um, but I don't have a I don't have a way to to to, to access that through Google Chat and stuff. So. Um, all right, so go ahead and add that one. Um, whenever you're ready, no rush. We're not going to do it on stream, so it doesn't matter. So now we're going to go back to something that's slightly less uninteresting. This is actually not helping me. Hang on. Let me see what I can do here. Uh, I guess I can move stuff to the left. I don't know if that's actually the wisest decision here. That is the one you used. Sorry. I can't, I can't say f tell if you're saying that is the one you used or if that's not the one you used. Let me move you off a little bit over here. Yeah. By the way, this is why uh, Unix lovers uh, love FVWM normally because it has multiple pages. It doesn't here. I wonder if I can make this full screen because I'm in. Because uh, I have. Uh, hmm, anyway. I used it. Oh, okay. I don't see you. I'm sorry. Let me let me check again. No, you're not here. Like, if you want to give me yours, I could I could try to add you. Request pending. Well, it, it doesn't. It doesn't give me a. Usually, give me a place to accept or reject. Um, yeah, you know, of course it is. If you're bored in the office, you want to be talking to me, and and, uh, and maybe we'll even put it on stream or something, and then everybody can be freaking bored. Love it. Um, okay, so. All right, so then we're going to go back to Replit and finish off our little program and try to post it to Google Pages, and maybe uh, even um, maybe even create a little interface to it so people don't you know have to edit the code each time. Uh, I don't know how much I'm going to do on it. I do not plan to make a complete application here. I do not plan to make it beautiful because uh, I don't know how. Uh, but let's let's um, uh, yeah, and, and I need to figure out a way to make sure I see new messages on this. Um, on this thing here without losing too much screen space. Okay. I think that should do. Um, okay. So what we did, we did find our waypoints. Um, okay. So now what we're going to do is sort of wrap this into a function. By the way, if you think this is impressive that we found uh, waypoints, it is not impressive. I did that in Perl earlier. I have the, you know, it's in my, it's in my bclib.pl. It's very easy code. So this is not impressive. Reminder, not impressive. Um, but, and w the main thing we got hung up on was trying to find a closed form for it. Or a, this and a problem similar to it. Uh, which, of course, we did not, uh, we, we did not do. Okay. Well, we did, but it, it, it was so horrible we gave it up. So now, we will have a great circle, uh, sorry, a waypoints function. So let's go ahead and, and I'm going to go ahead and shrink this down a little bit. Okay. Um, All right. So we're going to have a function called waypoints. Okay. Return a list of n waypoints. Obviously, we haven't defined what n is yet. The input object will have long one, lat one, the longitude and latitude of the first point. Of the of first point. And I guess we're going to go in order, so there is going to be a, we'll go from first to second. Longitude, latitude of second point. 
one of my pet peeves is no matter how wide the screen is or how not wide it is, I try to fit stuff into one line. So, uh, I mean, that's totally pointless unless we have a fixed um, screen width, which we don't. Um, you know, it'll, I could change this to be wider. Uh, that's one of my, that's one of my, I don't know if it's a pet peeve, it's a bad habit. Um, another bad habit is checking things like chat every three seconds. N, the number of waypoints desired, in this case I do need a parenthetical note. Um, the first and the initial and, uh, okay, the first and second points are also returned. So N minus two in between points. And what else would we want? Um, now I'm being terrible by saying in degrees. We will add a uh, option for, not not today or ever, but you know we could add an option for radians. Number of waypoints. Now you know what I actually do want it in radians, because then that makes the math easier. I don't have to translate. There's some way you can get it to change everything when you select something. Get it to do uh, change all, but whatever. Okay. So is that okay? So the return object waypoints, an array of waypoints, um, each having a longitude and latitude. Okay, but hang on. Um, this, I don't know if that should be called waypoints, though. I mean, I need to wrap the array in an object of some sort because I don't want to return a raw array. Um, an array, an array of waypoints as raw longitude and latitude. So that, that's what we're going to return. Function, waypoints, takes as input an object. Okay, so the first thing we need to do is kill all the lawyers. No, I'm just kidding. We don't need to kill any lawyers. Unless you want to. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and cut and paste the code from, um, um, from script.js. Uh, most of this is going to come in useful. How long is this freaking code? I'm so tempted to say now there has to be a simple formula for this. But we've gone down that road, and maybe there just isn't. So let's go ahead and cut and paste this. Man. And I, we don't really need that part, but I'm going to cut and paste it to remind myself that we're doing things in... Um, you know, we have to translate from, we want this to be in, in, um, in radians. Okay, so what are we doing here? Okay. Okay, good, because we are using, um, radians. We don't have to go through this BC lib degree crap. And I realize I'm the one who suggested it. So the theta is longitude 1, phi is longitude 2. And R is 1. And of course, I mean the object that contains this, these suckers. Okay, good. So the code's getting shorter now that we're kind of... And then we do the exact same thing for B, which we are ca calling... Um, which we're calling uh, longitude... Nope, I messed that up. This is longitude 1 and latitude 1. This is longitude 2 and latitude 2. One day I will learn how to program. Not today, though. Um, okay. All um, oh right, we just did this. Okay. And we want the angle between them, uh, which is the arc cosine of the dot product. So good so far. Now we want the vector that's perpendicular to the plane, which is the cross product of a v b v. Now be careful. This this oh we actually I'm mentioning it right here. Um, Excuse me. Perp to plane is not a unit vector, but it doesn't have to be. Perp in plane 
actually is a unit is not a unit vector either, but it needs to be one. So perpendicular plane unit is. Uh, do I have a um, a function that does this now? I do actually. So let's go ahead and use that because I you know vector multiply. Um, so we better send it in as. Ooh. Do we have to send it in as an array? Oh no, object V, object C. Okay, got it. Um, and at some point I'm going to want split screen for this, but anyway. Um, help, help, where am I? I'm lost. Okay, so what the hell are we doing? Oh yeah. This is just going to be vector multiply. Yay! I kind of wish I would, like, okay. The V vector is perpin plane. I think that has to be perpin plane array, but I think I might have already done that here. Um, oh, right, right, because the cross products are coming from the math library, which does treat them as arrays. So there's that, and the C is math norm of perpin plane. And I'm tempted to overwrite the value itself, but I'm not going to quite do that. And what we want out of this is res, which I'm hoping is an array. Um, um, and is not... Can I get split screen here? I cannot. Um, object view. Okay, so I guess that is also an array, because we we're, we're using map, it has to be an array. Okay. So now we have, I'm going to put this on a separate line, because it's a little bit longer. All right, so this isn't actually bad at all. Okay, so now we have, um, we have our, now the bad thing here is I'm doing a uh, floating point comparison. So it's quite possible that, uh, oh, you know what, actually, this is easy. Okay, and what this does basically is it says, even if you end up with i being a little bit over uh, the ag value, okay, do the indentation or what's it called, the auto indent, okay. There you go, it's auto indented now. I don't know if that did anything at all. You know, it should be doing auto indentation, you're right. Oh, it took a second to do that. Okay, hang on, sorry. So now it's all auto indented nicely. Okay, so what this does is it takes, um, Oh, but it adds spa so it's the thing that's adding spaces to my um, to my code. That's why we're getting so much of space crap. Uh, and I guess fixing is not going to help because it'll, it'll happen again um, once I re-indent. So I guess I'll leave them in from now on. Okay, so what this does is it lets I count up from zero to ang, but because we're comparing floating point numbers, it's quite possible we'll miss ang by you know we'll go too far, and then the last step won't run. By adding one half of n to the uh, to, to ang, um, uh, one half of one over n, which is one over two n, uh, we we kind of make sure we go to the final one without going too far. Uh, okay, so now we want the two. We are so bitchy. We're gonna. <laughs> Do you need brackets for one over two over n? No, actually, because I'm not saying one. <laughs> I'm saying 1 over 2 times n. So what I'm saying is um, right, and I'm not trying to say uh, yeah, I'm trying to say 1 half of 1 over n because our step is 1 over n. So this is what I'm saying. It turns out that's the same as that. In other words, this is one case where I actually do want divide, divide. Which is also the same as this. Uh, I just have sort of a bad habit of doing this, so doing 1 over 2 and I do 1 over 2 over n, but it's the same thing, same value. I hope. If this comes back to bite me, I'll be very embarrassed. Okay. Okay. And then this gives us the, um, the point on the plane. Okay. Hard for me to read. Really? 
Um, are you saying this? I mean, I, I try to make this text bigger than most streamers do when they're, they're coding because I can't read their code. Uh, I don't do it for you. I do it for me because I'm blind. But, but I thought this would be big enough to read unless you're... Um, or, or did you just mean this code is confusing as 1 over 2 over n? Which I admit it is, and that's p probably a bad thing to do. All right, so what we're going to do here is, I guess we're going to leave the name spaces in because it's not going to let me do anything about that. And then we convert that to spherical coordinates. We do not convert that to degrees. We do not need to do that. And then what we add to our, we need a return object here. Uh, can, can we, okay, so it's, okay, I understand. You're saying it's difficult to understand, not difficult to physically read. Which is good, because most of my code is confusing. Um, and so now we need to actually need a return object, which we will name ret, because we are so fascinated by that. So, and we do need to, because you can't declare an array empty, we do need to say ret waypoints uh, equals empty array and ret wait no, I think I said ret just array, equals empty array. So now, need something to write, need something to figure this magic out. Um, need to figure this magic out. Uh, in theory, you, could you can come into Replit and code with me. I don't know how helpful that'll be, though. Um, that's more for pair coding than for trying to understand existing code. Um, so let's see, so da, 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 and now, oh cool, we have, it, we have the return as an array, which is actually kind of what I want. So now I can say waypoints, nope, ret.array push, come on, <laughs> this better work, um, spt, um, and you know what, I'm going to put it over here because I'm being, um, in theory we could use this to do things other than one dimensional, sur uh, you know, surfaces with one radius one. So we will, I'll put, put in that, plus it's easier. Um, okay. And then, ret waypoints push. I am so sure this won't work. Um, the object whose longitude is spt0 and whose latitude is uh, spt1. And since I'm going to do this, I should probably just also return the radius. Um, and I'll go ahead and update the documentation. And radius. OK. So if I've done this correctly, end of for loop, return ret. And if I've done this correctly, we should now be able to go back over to here and again there is no die command in JavaScript this is just a way of stopping execution at this point and let me see and I forget what my um, I forget <laughs> what my boy stations look like let's go ahead and run this and get the stations okay so they both have a longitude and latitude. It is in degrees, which is which is fine. I'm okay with that. So now we're gonna call um, result equals waypoints with long one equal to um, a dot. Is it, it is longitude because I did this with Perl. Um, that's in degrees, so we have to do multiply by bc lib degree. Um, and for the rest, we'll just make it look really ugly by putting it on multiple lines. Um, uh, latitude one, I think we should do it in that order. A times a dot lat times bc lib dot degree. I am tempted that's not that. I'm tempted to do a loop to multiply all of these. Um, But I have su I have suppressed that desire, so this is going to be b lat times b c lib degree, and this is going to be longitude two is going to be b longitude times b c lib degree, and 
It's going to be pretty dull here because it's going to be in radians. Uh, but let's take a look at it anyway. Run, run like the wind. Redeclaration of AV. Mm. Oh, missing thingy after. Okay, this is probably the real problem here. Okay, let's run it. Redeclaration of let. Do, do I have like a let let AV somewhere? I bet you anything I do. Now these, this, this should work. These are private variables. Oh wow. Um. Yeah, I'm a fucking moron. This, this is of course a BV. There we go. Uh, now let's run it. See what happens. And I love the way it tells you exactly where that is, so you can never find it. Um. Oh, thank you. You're correct, of course. This is the... Wait. I hope that's what you meant. Now I'm confused. No, wait. Okay, okay, hang on. Sign I... C is that constant, and this. I think you meant it in a different place, though. Uh, let me just run this and see if I st it's still it's probably still broken. Different place. Okay. Um, is it in this code or is it in the? Oh, this is BC lib staging, or is it in the script code? I'm guessing it's in the script code. Um, I have no idea why this parentheses is there. I don't even need that. There we go. Oh, oh, I see what you're saying. Yes, you're right. Function call. That's what I meant to do. You're right. You're right. Yes, you're wonderful. I love you. Um, yeah, thank you. Okay, there was a little warning up there, which I don't like. Lone one is not defined. Well, that's not going to help at all. Um, okay, I'm going to have to find a version of this that does not automatically hit spaces, and they're really annoying me. Um, long one is not defined at, oh, it's script. Okay, that's probably the problem is in script, not in 611. Um, mm. uh, oh, you know what? N is not defined, that's for sure. That shouldn't cause that problem, though. Long one is not defined. Still having one over two over n. Yeah, it. I've I've been doing that for years um, since I started programming. Uh, and the reason for that actually was, it's text slightly shorter in characters than one any other alternative that I know of. Um, and back in the day when I started programming. Every single character counted, so it is. The sh I think it's the shortest way to write that that expression, one over two over n. Okay, but that does not help us here. Script six eleven. Let res. Okay, because that's where I'm calling it from. So I'm using long one in here some somewhere apparently. Data long one. And I think I know what I'm doing wrong. Oh, 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 oh. Spherical to XYZ by default does not return an array. So we need to tell it to return an array. My bad. I still don't know where long one is, is but I think maybe that was part of it. Um, I think I see why it works. Okay, good. Uh, I don't know why I read that out loud again. Vector multiply. So let me see if there's any other place where I need to make sure my thingies are... Uh, okay, perp to plane is from this, so it's an array. Still an array. I'm tired. I'm going to run it. Okay, still, still something wrong. Long one is not defined at line 20, 654. Uh, I know what's wrong. Because we're passing everything as an object, I should be saying, um, 
waypoint. Oh my god, what am I passing in? Um, object dot this stuff. Tree that gets generated, but I am not sure about the definitions of these things I skipped over. Um, in this case, it's the left to right law because div you know, there's no precedence here. So 1 over 2 over n is 1 over 2 over n. The right? Um, you mean 1 over 2 over? 1 over 2? Okay, I'm confused. I'm looking for 1 half of, um, of 1 over n. That's the thing I'm trying to get to. Because I want to jump, the last jump should be like right in the middle of two, you know, so we can get to the next step without going over it. Yes. And that, that is, that is, I mean, it, the, the, the most obvious way to say it is like this. One over n times one half. You can also say it as one over n over two. But you can also say it has one over you can also say it is one over two over n. So same thing. It's just in this case you're relying on the left to right uh, order of associate not associativity uh, non associativity uh, to get that to work. Um, okay, so long one. You're right, right, because we're saying it's going to be obj long one. This is one of the few uglinesses of um, of having to use objects, putting in objects. Uh, I still think it's a better approach because you can add um, new parameters if you want. I think Python has a way of doing that. One of the few nice things is that you can name your arguments instead of, uh, let's see if we have named arguments in JavaScript. That might be better than what I'm doing. I know Python has that. Okay, so it's outdated, so we'll go to this one. Yeah, see what's interesting here is they're using the exact same technique I am, which is wrapping the arguments inside of an object. Um, JavaScript doesn't have name parameters, but you can simulate them. Okay. Um, but the problem is you then have to refer to this object to get to it. Um, turn, yeah, and... Oh, what the hell? Wait, I'm confused here. Um, okay, what? So part of this I got, right? I passed it in as an object. Oh, when you define the function, you can actually put in your little parameters and then use them. That is frickin' clever. That is freaking clever. All right. Let me make a to-do note here, because that would be really useful. Um... that magic word they use when you, um, so, uh, destructuring, yeah, destructuring. Restructure my code to be more destructured. Okay. So, booyah. So, let's try that. That sounds much more exciting than what the hell I'm doing. Um, oh, that's the wrong one. That's the wrong one. I'm going to unpin this, and I'm going to pin my replit. Okay, so what I should be able to do here, if what I'm learning here is correct, is it doesn't really matter what order I put them in, uh, and n. So here I should be able to refer to long one um, as just long one. Long two is just, although what I'm, oh it's no longer called obj, so I actually do have to do it this way. I can no longer use object at all. But this is much nicer, well not much nicer code, slightly nicer code. 
Let's run this puppy. Die for it is not well. Okay, that actually I, that's actually good. Oh, that's gorgeous! Why didn't I should have known that? Okay, the fact that R is not coming up as one um, is not good. Let's take a look here. And that's not close enough to one to be convincing. Um, I am not happy. Yes, this code looks better. Did JavaScript but ten, year ten years ago, this code probably wouldn't have worked. JavaScript is changing to be a le slightly less sucky language than it was born as. Okay, so we have an issue here. And our issue is our waypoints function is being weird. Um, and let's see. I've got to be like really super fucking careful here. I recall it to be different, to be honest. Yes, and, and it was. It was really ugly. I used it when it came out in 1995 or 6. I don't remember. It was really ugly then. Slightly less ugly now. Okay, so what's going on here? The point is basically cosine plus sine. And we looked at this yesterday. It was looking gorgeous. These are two unit vectors. We're adding sine of one plus cosine of the other. There's the result should be a unit vector. And okay. Well, one bad thing here is um, I shouldn't be running x, y, and z. That's oh no, that's what I'm sending in. Sorry. Um, Mm, I'm not happy. Okay. Let's see here. I think by the time we get to this point, we're in bad shape. So let's go ahead and go up a little bit and see if we can catch it before this happens. Um, okay. I'm too lazy to name my variables, so I'll just say alpha, but I won't even bother to spell that right. Uh... Let's look at the norm of um, AV and the norm of uh, perp in... Oh, wait, 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 wait. Perp in plane unit, but I actually define it afterwards, so I need to be careful. So I need to move this statement below where it's defined. But before the for loop, because I don't want to repeat it. And then... Do I'm, I, am using, I am using perp in plane unit. It should be fine. Okay. Let's rock and roll this. Okay. Okay. Alpha one. Point three seven. Well, 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 well. Oh yeah, what would be really nice is if I were to, you know, divide it by that and sort of multiply it so, so it becomes of length one. I'm a fucking moron. Uh, okay, these points look more promising in the sense that r is equal to one for all of them. Um, and I will convert to radians now to see if we... Uh, okay, booyah, I'm going to go ahead and download this as a zip. And I guess I'll push it to GitHub because we're pretending like we're using their GitHub. Um, and I always hate this. Uh, you know what? I'm just going to say checkpoint. Uh, I'm not going to give Replit better comments on my Git pushes than I gave than I give um, than I give myself, really. Okay, solid. So now we've done that. Um, now, of course, what we kind of want is we want. Um, we, we want degrees for test testing purposes. So, um, res, 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 res. Oh, right, res has two different things. It has this little lot thing, and then it has the plane array. So we actually want res array. Um, I'm trying to be clever here and see if I can just map without having to go through a for loop. Um, but 
each element of Resurray is itself an array, so we've got to be careful here. Um, so let's not do that. Um, let's go ahead and loop through it. And actually, since we really don't care, we might as well just say, um, ith point, and then we'll say, I'll oh, put a parenthesis there. Um, res array ith element, uh, first element of the ith element, zeroth element, sorry, zero indexing, divided by bc lib dot degree, comma, comma space, comma, this is just where you get things get really ugly. Um, res array i second element, and we're not going to print the radius because we, it's not important to us here. Degree, and then we're going to print the close parentheses. Woo! I knew I was going to screw something up. Oh, wow. Sixth point. Yeah. It, it's <laughs> I, don't, I didn't think that was going to work. Um, but given that we're going from longitude minus 118 to minus 161, this is not looking too bad. Uh, and given that we're going from latitude, uh, 30, I'm going to hang on, I'm going to, good, my phone went off. Latitude 33.97 to latitude, um, um, 59, the latitudes are looking good too. So this is good. We're, I'm happy with this. Okay. Now, so I think we can move a lot of this code here where I say functionalize this because I have now done that. Um, yep, 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 yep. Yeah. All right, so this is good. We've moved something important into a function. So now what we're going to do is something even worse. In fact, I'm really unhappy about it. So I'll see if there's any messages in chat to distract me. Okay, I d there are not. Uh, we now have to look at each of these points and see what is the closest station to it in terms of the FAA array, which we've previously defined here in stations.js. Um, excuse me. There are a lot of good ways to do this, uh, but we're going to do it the bad way. We're going to actually um, uh, we're going to assign closest to B zero. Okay. I don't think Java rec oh maybe it does recognize plus infinity. We're just going to loop through it and basically find the distance, and you know every time we find a new minimum, assign it. This is not recommended behavior. Because the FAA array is like freaking huge. Um, okay. And now, and by the way, to compute this, we will need a little bit of work because uh, the FAA length vector is, I mean, the FAA vector, FAA J. Um, yeah, this is going to be ugly. Mm, I don't think I want to go through this more than once. Again, not a real command. Alright, so we'll go through it once and we'll look at all the FAA things and then we will, um, I'm pretty sure they had a great circle distance in, in turf. So let's run this. This is going to be very ugly. Well, that wasn't too ugly. Um, oh, fudge mellows. I know. Did I just say fudge mellows? Yeah. Um, because uh, J is an, it, J is not an array. It's a uh, it's an object. Um, technically. So how do we go through the freaking keys of an object again? Um, and I know this is very simple, so please, uh, I know I'm being stupid here. 
I also need to close up some of these damn tabs. Um, loop through objects. No, they're not objects though. Keys in JavaScript object. And it's something like um, in or something. Um, a better way. Oh yeah, I forgot about those. Keys, value, but it's entries does both? Shiny. That might be too complicated though. So object keys is what we want here. I know this problem googling stuff all the time. Yeah, and then you end up with like a bajillion open frickin' frick fricks. Um, okay, so what we want here is for J. Um, so we can still use a loop here, actually. Uh, let's see. Because object keys is an array. J less than F A A I dot keys dot length j plus plus and then what we want to print out here is um, I guess we can print out the key too it's not really going to be super important but let's go ahead and do that console log um, f a uh, hang on I uh, no 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 oh actually we can't do this um yeah okay so we need key there's probably a better way to do this like key equal f a a i keys Uh, number J and if this works it's going to be really ugly because we're, re we're theoretically recomputing FAI keys each time but I mean you know the compiler might be smarter than that but let me just see if this is working first FAI is undefined um, uh, let's see Do I mean... Oh, I don't mean that. I'm sorry. I mean FAA keys length. That's better. And then I want the JF key. That's much better. That's what I want to do. Okay. Truish. But you should not be getting that. You should be going through this for loop first. Um... Let's see what's going on here. Oh, wow. So you're not even getting here. Oh, you are actually. Hang on. Um, I'm groovy with that. All right, this is going to be so ugly, I'm going to stop it. Or, maybe I fucked the whole thing up. Let's see, console log i, this should at least print something, other than the... Oh, cool, so that works. So the problem we're having now is... Uh, FAA keys length. So that we can probably fix. And here we actually don't want it, we only want to take it once. And this is still going to be really long, but it's going to be long only one time. So let's see what this does. Oh, yes. It's a function, isn't it? a function that returns an array.
kind of a bummer. Um, am I doing this wrong? Oh, the motherfucker. It really is object.keys, not the object.keys. This is why everybody hates JavaScript, by the way. Because this should work. But apparently you have to do it this way. You can't just do it on the object itself, even though it has a function called keys. Why? Because they hate you. That's what I was looking for. Oh, good, it didn't actually print all of them. That's very nice. Okay. So, now we get back to this. Uh, and it is good to have this sort of in the in the main space, because uh, we don't want to recompute it. Um, and this we just need to say keys length now. Uh, console log. We don't need that. We don't need this. So we need FAA of uh, keys J. And I don't think this is correct. No, this is correct. Except I think we need this to be, um, let's just see. I think we need that to maybe be curly because it's, it's a, it's a hash reference. Although it'd be nice if we would actually do it correctly. Now either terrible things will happen or beautiful things will happen. Oh fuck! I forgot to put a stopper after printing them one time. I'm gonna have to do a shift reload here. Yeah, I meant to only print it out one time in... Um, okay. Okay, let's see if we lost anything. I don't think we did. make this a little bit thinner and then die in for loop I it's not really a function so I don't know why you know just do it this way okay this time it's still going to print out a lot of stuff but it'll only print out each station once yeah that was maybe not the best idea oh okay there we go okay that's good. Where's the rest of it? Okay. Alright, this is pretty much what we wanted. This is a list of all the facilities um, in, in the FAA uh, object, which is really an array. It's, a, it's an associative array. Um, okay, so now, now is where we really hurt... That's where we really hurt ourselves. Now is where we're going to go through and measure the distance from the waypoint we're on, which is um, res r i. Okay, and I think we can actually put this um, ahead of this because it's going to be res array. Did I give it res array a name? No, I guess not. That probably don't, doesn't need one. Res array i. And then we want out of that the zeroth object, because we're using the array form. And the latitude will be this. So, so this one we can, we can kind of fix here. Um, and then we want station longitude to be, uh, let's see. FA of keys of J. Okay. We want that one. Dot. I think we want dot lat times BC lib degree. And we have to do the same thing with. Um, that. 
Okay. So we have that. So now we should be able to take the uh, great circle distance uh, using um, uh, using the uh, hopefully built-in turf. Yay! What is it? Tell me. Give me everything. Okay. Stand by. I'm pretty sure that's great circle distance. I wanted you to assert you piece of crap. Oh, you can't do that. Let's see. Wow. The one thing you were sort of good at, you're not good at anymore. Okay. Um... It's not that advanced, you know, because you can't print do waypoints. Or can you? Did I just fuck that up and... Um... Oh! So we could have used this, actually. Distance along the line. So we could have done that, actually. Um... Okay. Okay, 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 okay. We didn't... We looked for, like, waypoints, but we didn't find that. But I mean, that's not... Uh, yeah, midpoint... But we want, like, of course we could have done midpoint, midpoint, midpoint. We could have done binary crap there, but anyway. GCD. Stand by. Um, stand by some more. Okay, GCD. Well, it's not good that... It Great circle. Um... Oh. Oh! A Great Circle feature line. So that kind of been useful, actually. That kind of would have given us what we wanted. It would have given us, like, uh number of points along the uh, yeah that, that probably was what we could have used that actually but I'm glad we didn't I, we learned some stuff along the way that's what I'd like to say when um, that's what I'd like to say when uh, I've wasted a lot of time okay let's see if there's a word distance shows up okay that's not what we want point distance Okay, that's that's also interesting, but not what we want. Yes. This is what we want. Distance. Uh, so I, I think the way they do this, they do allow arrays as the input objects. Um, turf distance. And to be honest, we could have write, written our own function for this. And maybe we should. Um... So I'm getting pretty damn tired of turf. Uh, no, we are using it for other stuff, so I think we have to use it now. <sighs> uh, our from will be our array of... It doesn't really matter. I mean, it'll be... It'll be whatever AV is. No, I'm sorry, it'll be where the waypoint is. Um, which is just going to be long lat. Okay, if turf uses lat long, I might just dump it right there. No, they appear to be using long lat. In that order. And the two point is, um, well, we just computed it. S long, S lat. And so I want to console log that GCD. If we don't give any options, um, it should still work though. All right, let's see what this does. Expect to see a bunch of distances show up. Okay, good, 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 good. The fact that it took that long is probably not great. Because uh, that was one. Now, I'm hoping it's just the printing that slowed it down. Um, we're going to cheat. Or test. 
Call your cheating testing, and it always sounds better. We're going to give it, like, just a hundred points. Not print this out. Go ahead and not die in the loop. Um... If great circle distance is less than min, in other words, we found a closer point, um, great circle distance, what the hell am I saying? Yeah, yeah, min is now equal to the great circle distance, and the closest facility is now um, FAA keys J, which I guess I could just store as J at this point because I know, I know where I am. Okay. And then when you've done that, console log m j and min. Everybody happy? All right, let's see how fast it goes in 100 points. Oh, that was actually pretty quick. Wait. Oh, wow. Did that actually do 10 times that fast? I am suspicious. Um, and I am, wait a minute, oh, I am suspicious, yeah, this needs to be outside the J loop, it's going to occur once for each, uh, waypoint, not, oh, 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 uh, really? Uh, and I probably meant to say closest here, didn't I? Alrighty. That wasn't as good as I expected it to be, but let's take a look here. Oh, that's not too bad, actually. So this gives us the distance at each waypoint to the minimum. It'd be kind of nice if we actually put in the waypoint number there. Which waypoint are we talking about? And by the way, the first one should be closest to itself, obviously, uh, which turns out to be waypoint 40, 93, 93. And that's where we might have an issue. Um, it might be that the closest waypoint is the same because you're traveling over a place where there's no waypoints. Th and there's a long distance between them. I'm probably okay with that. And why don't we, if we're going to be, like, really fun about this, um, FA of the closest, and... Yeah, for right now, just give us the name of the... Just give us all the... Di just dump it, but... Hmm. Oh, no, I'm sorry. It's FAA of keys of closest. And if this works, I'm saving it and GitHubbing it. Nice. Bootleggers Cove, Bootleggers Cove, Bootleggers. So it's actually that you're closer to the destination, like for half the journey. Juneau International Airport, um, Wakanda Beach State, Rio Linda. Um, now, of course, we're probably going to print this in a nicer way. Well, we will be printing this in a nicer way once we turn it into an HTML application. Um, but like I said, I'm going to go ahead and sh GitHub this. Uh, checkpoint. Commit and save. Go back over here. Download as zip. So, okay. So now, of course, we want to restore the correct line and see if it can work fast enough for actual production use. Um... Let's find out. That was not too bad, actually. Oh, hang on. Am I dying for it too early? Oh, I don't need to die for it anymore. It's literally the end of the program. Okay. So that was not too bad. That was a fairly rapid calculation. I'm happy with that. Okay. Boys and girls in the audience. Uh, let's see if there are any boys and girls in the audience. 
Oh, crap, I forget you guys can see that. I'm not sure I want to reveal that to everyone. I mean, it's not private, but I mean, some of these people might be lurking. I will let them lurk. Okay, so what is our next step here? Uh, the next step here is, I think we're ready to turn this uh, into an actual, uh, let's see. Um, I'm just vaguely curious to see if we can do... Um, I mean, this is what, we're not going to print out this crap like this. Damn, that's awesome. Okay. So now we need to actually create a way for people to access this JavaScript code. Um, which I'm very bad at, by the way. Um, so, let's see. This is going to be ugly no matter how we do it. Um... And I'm not, I'm not going to be nice. I'm not going to give them a... Uh, I'm not going to let them choose from a list of stations. I'm, they're going to have to put an input in latitude and longitude and, you know, a point 0.1 and a point 0.2, but I will print out nice information about the, uh, the points they go through. Okay. So, now, usually... Um, and correctly, actually... Um, Inputs belong inside of a form. We're not submitting them anywhere, but but in theory. Uh, ID equals lon1. Um, and if I've done this correctly, this is just going to be a blank line because I haven't put anything in front of it. Um, then I guess our script.js shouldn't ri really do anything right now. Um, I'm pretty sure I can't return because we're not in a function. So we'll just die hard. And let's look at the result. Okay, good. So we do have this thing that I wanted, which is a text box. Um, and so we can do four of these. We'll probably need to separate them with the break. And this will be long. Two, ladder two, two. And then a um, a compute button, and I think you can actually say type equals button id equals run um, compute with an exclamation point because you're very excited about that. Okay. Oh, actually, I guess the button doesn't. Uh, you can't do that with the button. Uh, there is a way to give the button a name. Um, I think it's value. Um, compute! Yes. But we should probably give these... Now, keep in mind, we're in a very thin screen here. But when we go to the full screen version, um, those are not really having new lines between them. So let's go ahead and fix that up. Um, should I say initial or departure? I'll say departure. Departure longitude. degrees, because I'm that fancy. And we really do want them to, you know, no one, people really do use degrees for this sort of thing. Departure, latitude, degrees. Destination, longitude, degree. Well, okay, now I'm getting, thinking that maybe, um, this would be better as a uh, general instruction. All inputs should be in degrees. And then, of course, the destination latitude. Decimal degrees, aren't I fancy? Um, um, and I guess what we're going to put up here is number of waypoints. Um, and that one we're also going to say, um, we probably want to make it a little bit smaller. In fact, we might want to make all of them smaller. Um, 
And now they're still not going to be lined up, uh, because they still haven't put brake lines between them. They're going to look really bad now. Yep, that's how I expected them to look. Let's go ahead and fix that by putting some brakes in here. Um, I forget if I'm going to use paragraphs or brakes. I think I'm going to use brakes here because I want to keep them fairly close to each other. And by the way, if you're one of the people who uses, um, you know, something that's actually good uh, for to do, you know, like reactor view or whatever the things those are, this is going to appall you because I am more into functionality. If someone wants to improve this code, it's on Replit, so you can do it. Uh, or you can just talk to me about it and we can work on it together because I'd love to run... run I would love to learn more about basic design improvement. Okay, and by the way, there is the left edge of this is off the edge of the screen, so that's why. Um, that is fine. Okay. Um, now, technically, of course, the number of waypoints is not computable to nothing. And now we need to stick a listener onto button. Um, and I forget how to do that. I think you can say on click equals or something and have it call a function. Um, but I know I've done this before, so I'm tempted to look back at my old uh, replit stuff. Um, more tempted, more tempted, T tempted enough that we're going to do it. So this could be like a piece of programming advice here. Uh, if you're stuck and you know you've done something before, look at the way you did it before. That usually will be like very quickly uh, give you what you need. Cold sugary virus, interpolation, playground. I think it was in OSM leaflet that we ended up coming up with the actual menu and stuff. Um, which we'll see if we, if we have one here. Um, doesn't look like we do. Not good. Source. Uh, we do not have a button anywhere in here. Bummer. Okay. Okay, 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 okay. Now we go really into darkness. Pages.github.com Okay. Uh, I'm going to try to find my own page, but I don't have it listed um, on this machine, I don't think. I'm almost sure I don't. Uh, oh! I am incorrect about that. It is barrycarter.github.io I has a sad. I think it's maybe just BS. So this Brian Caps guy is uh, apparently actually is alive and well. Um, okay. I sort of know why this is happening. Um, unfortunately, I might not know enough of... Okay, so let's see. I'm on another machine. You can't see what I'm doing. I'm, I'm pretty sure I had written down where I have this. Hey, this should exist. Well, maybe it's under pages. Oh, okay, good. Um, and then bclib tester, it has the bizarre name of what we're looking for. This is what I was looking for. And let me um, bookmark it. Don't need a note or anything. So I think we've, I've looked at, we've shown this before on this here. Uh, this basically lets you pl put in a bunch of maps, like the OSM map, um, the time zones map, land use map, climate, and you can overlay them on each other with different opacities. Um, so for example, if this is, you know, and you can just do this actually. So here is the land use map at very great darkness. And now let's say we want to sort of add the climate map. We can do this, and then we sort of add the climate map. And um, and you can see the uh, the climate and land use. And if we want, we can add a little grid here, which isn't very useful. Um, time zones, good, good stuff like this. 
and whoa OSM I don't that's weird that it's not checked anyway we want to use the source code of this um, which by the way I have obviously somewhere else so that's kind of weird um, input type somewhere we have a listener here or actually hang on I think it's in one of the included uh, no okay um, I'm trying to find where I where I bind the uh, the other stuff to uh, BC lib, so none of these are going to do that, so false input type equals range, blah, 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 none of these are id equals info map, climate map, land use map. Um, I don't think any of these create, oh, okay, here we go. There we go. It's buried in here. Uh, you get the element by id and you add an event listener for when it changes. Um, and I guess the event listeners for buttons are different, um, and I don't want to recompute every time they change any box, so this is a little bit different. Um, so on any change, update. So what are the, uh, what are the events that a, a button can get? Okay, well, you know what we can do? We can console log that shit. Okay. Um... Can we? Oh, actually, can we console log that? Um, wow. Um, where did I put that view source? I maybe got rid of it. Yep, okay, hang on. We will continue to look here. There we are. Okay. Uh, wonder if we can add event listener any. Let's try that. Um, and this will be in JavaScript, of course. And our button is called button. Always a good, good name for a button. Uh, document add event listener. Um, all on, I think I need to actually get the, uh, get element ID, get element by ID, so I need to do a little bit more here. Okay, I should be getting a completion here. Oh, hang on, I think with JavaScript they're actually okay with you like putting this and then doing this and of course part of this is just not going to work because we have this okay I don't think this is going to run oh I put the dot in the wrong place it is get element by ID button to that add the event listener all oh and I didn't even put in a function to run um, I'm going to regret this. Well, let's see what it does. Document get element by ID. Of course, it's not a function. It's a um, because I've misspelled it somehow. Oh, the I the D is not capitalized. Aha! Well, that's a better step. Document get element by ID is null. So hang on. Um, and this actually isn't a bad idea to, to give this a variable name. And this should be let, and this should be let. Um, um, yeah. 
let baton equal and if this doesn't work I kind of know what's going on um, there's some magic you have to do I think to get the to recognize the get element by ID should work but let's see if it does no okay let's see what we did here okay we used the key which is which is fine uh, info map okay Mm. Okay, that should work. Let's go back over here and see if I missed something. Um. Oh, I, actually, the idea is run. I'm a moron. You knew that. So let's do IDs run here. This should give us something. Yep. So now we want to do button add event listener all this probably won't work I don't think you can listen for all although if this works then I'll be getting a lot of alerts here in just a second um, okay um, and one issue here is I can't stop the JavaScript loop if I want to test this code there's a, there's a limit to die hard. Sorry, Bruce. Okay, we'll just comment that code out instead. Okay, so let's see if this works now. I still don't think it'll work, by the way. I still don't think you can listen for all events on a button. And I am correct. Oh, actually... Um, actually, let's go ahead and create a function called update which will take an event. So right now I'm just going to console log the event. So I'm going to be a little bit clearer because the alert function may not have been good enough for what I was doing. So let's run the sucker. Compute. Com no, it's not doing anything. Okay. Um, can I do star here? I get the feeling there's no way to make this listen for every event. Yeah, no. Okay. Um... Now the real question is, is there any way to know the full list of events JavaScript can listen for without necessarily um, having to Google? And the answer is I don't care, because we're going to Google. Um, okay, introduction to events. On click. So that should be fine. Um, okay, that did not do what I wanted. Button add event listener on. Is it on fucking camel case click? Someone really needs to fix JavaScript or, or just kill it. Nope, that still didn't work. Okay, what's going on here? I know I did this over here, so it's not that off. Um, uh, where is it? Okay, add event listener, blah, blah, update. Update is a function that takes one, an event. Alrighty. We're getting close. Or are we? Okay. So the only difference here is, um, now it is on click lowercase. Um, so add event listener. Oh, but you know what? I need to add it to the actual element, not to, um, that is what I'm doing. 
So we have the element, and it definitely exists. Um, and I'm saying on click, run the update function. So what's wrong with that? Um, yeah, I mean, I guess I could use query selector or something, but it's the same thing. I mean, we know we have this button, and we can actually spit it out in a minute to, to look at it. But Okay. Hit me with your worst shot. Nothing. All right, let's go ahead and look at the button here. And actually, I'm going to look at it after I've added the event listener to see if the event listener is being weird. Probably should have controlled X to that. Okay. Now, if this doesn't give us the information we want, that there we go uh, okay it's just an HTML input element now if I hit this nothing new is showing up all right and we can actually do a little bit better than this we can do a var dump which is a function I wrote and that'll tell us a lot more about this maybe unless I didn't write it okay here we go and a var dump just goes through its uh, objects goes through its keys so let's see. So there's quite a bit of crap here. Step up, step down, da, 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 da. blur, on mouse down, on mouse. So there should be, there's on click. Well, see, this is not good. Um, the add event listener should have, you know what, let's, let's just F with this. Oh wait, did I need to put the function in quotes? I'm almost sure I did. Nope, I don't. Let's see you work with that. Yeah, now what happens, huh? Now what happens when I click the button? Whoa, did something actually happen? Let me put a few new, oh, we can't even do that. Okay, hang on, I don't think anything happened, but I'm going to double check it by not var dumping the button. Whoa! Yo mama! So why did this not work? Well, let me comment it out to make sure it's the other thing that's doing this. Okay, let's hit the button a few times. Hit me with you. There we go! Okay, so I added These two lines should have done the same thing, I think. But I don't care. I mean, this is fantastic. Does what we want. And let's go ahead and save this to Git again. Um, I changed nothing. I changed nothing! Alrighty. And then we'll go ahead and do a... Uh, I don't even know why I bother with Git. I'm never going to... Even if I find it, I'm never going to use it. Download a zip. Be downloaded and be happy. Okay. Cool deal. Um, now, obviously, when we um, we get inputs, we, we, we shouldn't just console log the event. Uh, what we actually want to do here is we want to pull data from the uh, the um, the fields. And there's a nice way to do that. Um, actually, I don't need to define them every time we update. So this will be... Um, well, let's see what our elements are, but I think they're just very simply named long. I forget what the waypoints element is named. But the other ones I'm pretty sure I just named the obvious way. Oh, I didn't name this one, so that's not good. ID equals N. Blah, blah, blah. Okay. Now, I don't remember exactly how to get the value of a... Um, uh, let's see. Okay, gotta be careful. N is going to be the value of what's inside of here, but we want to. We don't want to quite go that far yet. Uh, entry N equals document get element by ID um, N, and let's see if we can do that same magic for. 
everything else. Actually, I'm just going to do it for this because I want to test before we go too far that we can get it for this. Okay. Um, so there's a, there's a correct way to do this and we're going to do it in the wrong way. When we press the button, we're going to console log uh, entry n. One of the things in it is the value. Uh, I, for I think it is just value maybe. Well, okay, now let me, let me just see if we can do this. Okay, run uh, 500 SDSF uh, points. Oh! Entry and value is not a function. Is it a method? Is it a other thingy? The thing that's not a function, a property. Losing my freaking mind. Okay. Oh, it is, it is, it is just a property. Okay, cool. Um, okay, so we can get that information. That was not at all what I meant to do. Entry long one is what this is going to be. And maybe I'll cut and paste this one because it's the one that looks, it looks entry long. Yeah, I know I'm doing this wrong. I mean, it doesn't matter what order I get them in, but I'm, kind of being a bastard here. Um, so that one is that one. Okay. Okay, I'm going to be clever on this one. Um, uh, let's see. Um, do I need to declare, a I'm trying to do like a four dot, no, obviously it won't be dollar, like in like, you know, A comma B comma C kind of thing. Um, I don't know if I need, I probably will need, um, a f I will need to create an array. For var key, oh. So var key in maps. I guess that's another way to go through it is to, to um, is to just uh, use the in command of JavaScript. Okay. I am very hesitant to think this will work. And we do need to say let i in. I wonder if that's correct syntax. Var i in. N long one. We're just going to test with that. Console log i b i. So that does. <whistles> oh, wait. Wait, wait, wait. Um, that's not quite what I want. Um, I'm almost sure you can't turn this into an object. And to be honest, I don't know what this structure is right now. Um, I'm just curious now. I am just freaking curious now. Oh, it's a string. I'm almost sure I meant to say array here. So we're going to get rid of a little bit of redundant code if this works. Okay, that's fine. Uh, 
So can I get a value out of that sucker? I mean, I don't want... Um, so if I turn this into this, which shouldn't work at all, but let's see what happens. Yeah. So how do I go through... How do I go through a, a list of uh, key value pairs when I don't actually... So here I have them all defined, so that works. Uh, here... I don't, and I don't know if I want to create a separate array just to get around that. Um, hmm. Let's see if we can find that out. Sounds a little bit interesting, actually. JavaScript loop through array values. Nope, we're, we're done with you. Okay, let's see how we do this. That's the obvious way. I'm getting tired. Um, the for loop, the while loop, for each. Oh. Um. Okay, that might be the way we have to do it. Every using map. Actually, I kind of like that using map. Yeah. Yeah. So this, because this gets to be like code that's ugly but still useful. So. Now we need a function uh, that takes x to, uh, and we need an, we need an output object. So we'll say let uh, list. No, they're not listeners. Um, let elements equal the empty array. And and I think it has to be declared like this because I'm going to use it as an associative array. Yeah, this is actually taking more time than it would have to. Um, and what we want to say is else dot uh, x is equal to document get element by data. By ID, rather. Of of uh, x. Yeah, that that might not be the way to do it. Um, and then let's see if else gets set up the way we want. And this this might be a, this might be going down the wrong path here. I blame Replit on that. I think Replit pulled that one for me. Aha! No. Has to be this. I'm referring to the variable x, not to the property x. And I think I told someone about... Ooh, shiny. I didn't expect that to work. Uh, and I think... Okay, solid. That's gorgeous. Um, so now up here in update, um, actually, because I want to loop through uh, th these again. Um, and this time grab their values and put them somewhere. So let's actually say inputs equals and then we can uh, we can reuse this array as we need it. And if we need to add anything to it we can do that too. Um, it's going to be inputs map. 
All right. Let me make sure they didn't break anything. Paranoia. They didn't. Okay. So here, if this works right, we can say uh, inputs. Uh, okay. And we will need to store a little uh, a, a little associative array here. Okay. Inputs each. Nope. Map. Uh, which takes x to uh, object of x. Gotta be careful here. Uh, equals, and we need to remember this is going to be the dot dot value. Um, else of x dot value. This is assuming they each have a value. The button might not actually have a value. Um, and then we should be able to console log object and see if it has all the values we want. So let's run. Nothing should happen until we hit Mr. Button. And then, ooh, shiny. That I'm not quite happy with that. I want to put something in here. Da -da, da -da 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 -da. Now let's see what this is. Oh, this is gorgeous. This is exactly what we wanted. Um, so we're in pretty good shape here. Uh, we can read our inputs. Obviously, we will be putting in more useful inputs. And then the next, the only real step here now would be to send, well, we'll need to send them to the waypoints function. And then we'll basically need to do what we did before. Except instead of console logging, it will put it somewhere where it's actually useful. Um, and I'm thinking maybe a table. But that one I haven't decided on. Okay, boys and girls, and men and women, and everybody else. Holy moly, I've been streaming for 2 hours and 12 minutes. Thank you for watching the stream. Um, goodbye for now, and I may be back later today. Thank you.